matchup between Alexander Volkanovsky and Charles Oliveira. So here he is, one of the more prolific takedown artists in the UFC at present. And when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier, when it comes to your offensive takedown game, you know you're doing something wrong. And we talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers, but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweep from the grappling game. He is able to use throws from judo, and he's able to use wrestling in the, from the wrestling game to take people down. He has an array of takedowns at his disposal, and he uses every single one of them from the speed of the level change to the timing to the knowledge of where to go next. When the guy starts to defend, he's truly, truly something special. I don't think he could take you down, but tonight he doesn't have to. So he does not in have this to. matchup, prevailing wisdom is he'll be able to get this fight to the canvas. Proudly prepping the Anzacs, Australia and New Zealand. Here is City Kickboxing's UFC featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky draws rave reviews from past opponents, from his teammates. He is the ultimate competitor, and anybody who saw him compete in a rugby league setting at 214 pounds, I might add, knows just how committed this guy is to athletics and to realizing greatness in the UFC. He certainly did that against Max Holloway, but he's gonna get everybody's best shot, and that continues in earnest here tonight as they all continue to chase down the Australian champion, Volkanovsky. All right, now let's get to the tail of the tape for this featherweight tilt. The Brazilian is 30, the Australian is 31. Oliveira will have a three inch reach advantage. To get us started with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 33 wins, nine losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles do Bronx Oliveira. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 25 wins, one loss. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Alexander the Great Volkanovski! You can give me your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We will have a clean fight. Touch gloves, let's make it official. All right, so here we go with round one, and on one side, clearly the more well-rounded fighter, yet when we sat down with him on Thursday, first words out of his mouth, he ain't gonna submit me, I'm gonna try to take him down. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> and you laugh just like that, because you know how much of a joke this is. You wanna avoid the grappling with this guy at all costs. I know he has bravado. I know he has a big ego, but it would benefit him to fight this fight and make it as easy as possible. Oh, Superman punch. Not always easy to execute. He did so there. Over and over, he lands these big body kicks. A single collar tie. Big knee lands to the body. Good volume of knees here by Volkanovski. Great punch. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Back and forth we go. And he lands.
landed the right hand there. Beautiful take that land. Oh! Oh, what a beautiful counter to the guillotine there. Gets side mount, and now maybe the Von Flu choke will be there. Open St. Cruz has got to like that transition there. All right, full guard here, DC. We'll see how soon he tries to pass. Well, he needs to be passing immediately. In the full guard is where you are in most danger as a top fighter because they have all of their submissions. They have the guillotine, they have the arm bar, they have the kimuras, they have all their locks when they're in the full guard. So if you pass, you really do limit the danger that you're in from the top position. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing. So he's going to attack the triangle choke here. Oh, wow, oh! And this might just be a matter of time. to watch. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Here we go with round two. Look at him drive his shin into his own body with that body kick. That is, oh man, this dude is good. Oh, that is a huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up right. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talk to your toughness. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. This ground and pound is good. It's probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Pretty significant welt to the left side. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Volkanovski. Hey, under three minutes now to go on the round. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Lands a strike now from the bottom. Nice work there by Oliver. Now connects with a right. Under two minutes to go here in our second round. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. that usually makes you tap. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Oh, now he's a 
of trouble. Brilliant submission defense there. Volkanovski gets back up. No surprise there. Hardy closes the distance against the single power tie. All right, that's the end of round number two. All right, so there's the end of the round, and on one side, thrill on the other, agony after that knockdown. Yeah, he was able to really damage him with that big punch. You see the hands, the speed, how sharp he is, how technical he is. It allows him to land in spots where his opponent is winging punches. Great strike landed, great punch landed to put his opponent down. You ready to fight? Ready. Third round underway. Big powerful punch land. Now he gets back to range. Volkanovski has never lost a pro fight at 145 pounds, and if his boxing is any indication, that is a record that is probably going to hold up after time. I mean, Volkanovski follows the game plan to a T. Whatever you set out in front of him, he is going to do, and he's going to do it at the highest level. We saw that in this fight against Max Holloway when he became the UFC featherweight champion. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Olivera's pass is denied. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely done by Volker. Olivera's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swelling. Just over three minutes to go. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, so he's sort of turtled up here. Not great body language. Perhaps he's trying to bait him in a little bit. Just reached the midway point of the fight. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts. Takes the back, now going for the rear naked choke. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. This might just be a matter of time. <laughs> there is the tap. So he submits courtesy of the rear naked choke. That guy's got a squeeze up. He does a great job securing the position, getting under the neck, and then hiding his hands in order to get the finish. Fantastic performance by this fighter. Well, yeah, so the work in the gym pays off here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Gorgeous setup on the choke, and I think even better execution down the stretch. Clearly, it was sunk in deep. His opponent had no choice but to tap or take a nap. In this case, he chose to tap out. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 16 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by tap out, Charles the Bronx. Well, the celebration is 